very dexterous because uh, it has something called the six degrees of freedom motions, right? Like an aeroplane, right? Like roll pitch yaw, right? You need like all three degrees of rotation for the aeroplane to, to move or any type of uh, robot also. Therefore, it can navigate across uh, barriers that are impassable by existing small-scale robots. Uh, the key advantage of this kind of small-scale robots is that they can use their size and mobility to non-invasively assess highly confined and enclosed spaces to perform a wide range of tasks. So existing uh, methods or treatments that allow uh, targeted drug delivery to certain parts of the body, they are using the uh, human's blood circulatory system to transport the drugs. Probably around like 0.7% to 5% of drugs can deliver to the disease sites. And other drugs are delivered to other places that are unintended. And this may actually cause other types of, you know, side effects. And, but then small scale robots, right, we can actually deliver like 55% of the drugs to a targeted location. This can actually allow the patients to potentially recover faster and the treatments will can be more efficient. At this current stage, our robot is sufficiently small for probably in the digestive systems. We actually intend to string the size of our robot to 1.5 mm and below because these are like the critical dimensions that we can eventually deploy these robots, you know, across the central nervous systems and like the urine systems. And we are also thinking about ways to make the robot biodegradable. We hope that once the robot has done its job, right, it can just degrade safely into the human body. Now the robot is controlled by a human. So we wish to automate this whole process to get more data to eventually train their neural network so that we can actually make the robot much smarter. This is still in the research stage. In the experiments, we are actually using like the stomach phantom. It's just the geometry of the phantom that is similar to the human stomach. And probably within the two to five years time, we will want to evaluate uh, the robots on this kind of organ on chip devices and hopefully we can move on to animal models. That's our goal within the next uh, five years. The next five to 15 or 20 years, then we hope to get approval to perform human trials to see that they can be deployed to help people.